Did you know that Elgato was not the only capture card company to sell an HD60 Pro? <laughs> this is actually one of two other companies selling a product called the HD60 Pro that I'm going to be reviewing today. Today we're taking a look at a capture card that records both over USB and a micro SD card and it is a little weird. Uh, I'm going to say that despite the fact that it's currently being pushed as a gaming capture card, it wasn't originally built as a gaming capture card and that might be a little weird. We're going to take a look in today's review. This video is brought to you by Nerd or Die and their new terminal cyberpunk themed stream layout. You've got alerts, you've got overlays, you've got a full layout to choose from, customizable elements, stinger transitions, and all the source files, if you wish, available to edit for yourself and change colors, change aspects, or render them out for YouTube videos. Pretty cool stuff here, and you can save 15% across the entire website by heading over to eposvox.gg slash nerd or die and use coupon code eposvox at checkout. I'm Eposvox, Vox, the stream professor, and welcome back to another capture card review. I have hundreds or at least a hundred capture card reviews on the channel at this point. We take a look at them, take a look in depth, do a lot of testing with them, and see if they're the right buy for you. Today we're taking a look at the Narvatech U2 HD60 Pro, also known as the Saturn NS110, because no company can stick to a single product naming scheme. <laughs> this is a product that is also called the HD60 Pro, but isn't made by Elgato and isn't anything similar to their HD60 Pro at all. But this is a capture card that is interesting for many reasons, but I don't entirely know who it's for. I've had a lot of requests recently to take a look at more generic, less name brand capture cards, and this is one I'm taking a look at. And this one is quite different because it has micro USB 2.0, you know, USB 2.0 and micro SD recording. So this is useful for those of you who want to record your games or whatever without having a computer nearby necessarily which is pretty cool this is basically like a portable field recorder but only records to h264 to micro sd without a monitor or anything so it's pretty interesting i'm actually going to have a whole dedicated video to capture cards that don't require a computer uh i keep i've planned this basically all year and keep putting it off because i keep getting new ones that do it uh but i'm pretty sure i'm i'm, I'm dedicating myself to actually finishing this soon because there's quite a few options available now however as we take a physical overview here, you'll notice there's one big downside. So on the front, you have the Narvatech logo, a big uh, record button for when you're in the SD card mode, and then it has an, SC, or an LED in ring indicator to indicate when it's ready, when it's recording, what have you. Bottom has some nice rubber feet. Uh, one side has the mode button to switch between SD recording mode and PC recording mode. Unfortunately, you cannot do both. So if you're wanting to like add it to your stream and then also record to SD as like a backup or as a clean copy. You can't do that, only one or the other. And then this F1 button will allow you to take screenshots when you're in the SD recording mode. Micro SD card slot on the side, so micro SD recording. And then you have an HDMI input and micro USB output. There is no pass through, which is very unfortunate for a cheaper capture card like this, especially one that's meant to be PC list because this means you'll need an HDMI splitter or matrix connected in order for it to work, which is pretty disappointing. Specs wise, we are looking at, once again, a 1080p 60 only capture card. No 4K input 1080p 60 capture, no HDR support, no 1440p, nothing bigger than 60 Hertz, but it does have a scaler on board when connected to the computer. So it will support lower than 1080p 60 signals being captured natively, and you can downscale the 1080p down to 720 or what have you which is pretty important. In terms of color format support, it does have a built-in H.264 encoder because that's what it uses to record to the micro SD card. You can use that on the computer. However, this will be much higher latency, much more laggy and much lower quality than the other option, which is only MJPEG when you're using it on the computer, which I can't believe I'm advocating for MJPEG after spending most of my capture card reviews trashing it. But comparatively, even as flawed as MJPEG is, it's going to be higher quality than the H.264 encoding here. So if you have it connected to a computer, you want to use MJPEG, not H.264. Obviously, the H.264 encoder is what's used when recording to micro SD card. Although theoretically, they could just dump the MJPEG stream to SD card. I wonder why no one's done that yet. I will have a video coming soon where I test on some lower end streaming rigs the actual performance of MJPEG versus YUY2 versus H.264 and all of that to kind of illustrate that better. But generally speaking, you don't want to run the H.264 encoder on a computer if you have the option to avoid that on basically any device because it's going to be lower quality and more higher latency, more input lag, whatever. 
The H.264 encoder on board is encoding to about 15 megabit megabits per second for 1080p, which is not enough IMO, but it's about standard for all of these portable little devices. So that's unfortunate, but there's not a whole lot you can do about it. This is another capture card where presently this may change in the future once I provide enough information to them. But presently, if you're adding this to OBS, you will need to add a custom audio device and select the HDMI audio from this device in order to get audio in OBS. The good news is this is a UVC capture card, which means that it's plug and play on Windows, Mac and Linux. So Linux users rejoice. You have another option available to you and it will work as a webcam, which means you can plug it in, use the Windows 10 camera app. You can use Skype, Zoom, Discord, all the video chatting, video calling apps, and it will be detected and work to use if you connect a camera to it to or anything to it really to then video conference, video call, teach, stream, broadcast, whatever. All that's available. So that's pretty cool. With all of my capture card reviews, I test the input latency from the HDMI feed to the OBS preview rendered full screen to see what kind of audio latency syncing you're going to have to deal with. In MJPEG, it's about 100 milliseconds, which is, again, not great, but not on the highest of end capture cards that I've reviewed recently. You, ideally, you want around like 50 or 60 milliseconds for like a good capture card. So this is less than good, but it's USB 2, so that's to be expected. However, that's an MJPEG. Just to kind of illustrate the difference in latency here, the H.264 input latency is at least 240 milliseconds. Now, once you start getting past this, my actual input latency detection tools kind of fail because the latency gets so far behind that it catches itself. It basically like laps itself if it was a race. And so it could be even slower and just picking this up, but it's at least 240 milliseconds. So you definitely don't want to use H.264 if you're worried about audio syncing at all. Capture quality is okay. Uh, if we're looking at the MJPEG capture quality, it has all the typical MJPEG, you know, artifacting. MJPEG is literally motion JPEG, so any JPEG picture you've seen where it has little blocking or artifacting from the compression, that's what you have here. It's not ideal. You're not getting completely lossless game captures or anything like that. It's probably fine for most people, but as someone who prefers to get everyone on the highest quality possible when it's reasonable, not ideal. Uh, so you have those inherent little blockiness patches, especially in gradients and, you know, lots of detail changes, things like that. If we're looking at the quality of the onboard encoder, again, it's 15 megabits per second for 1080p. IMO, you shouldn't even be exporting your videos to YouTube at only 15 megabits per second for 1080p. You should be exporting at like 28 megabits per second for 1080p 60 videos to upload to YouTube, which means your source video encoding needs to be higher than that. Ideally, double that, but you're getting 15 megabits per second, which means you're already getting a very soft a kind of blurry and very pixelated in certain scenes video image which is fine if you just want to if you have an hdmi splitter you just want to set this on your tv stand while you're playing and you just want to capture gameplay and deal with it later and you're not worried about quality you just want the flexibility of capturing gameplay you know press of a button not needing a computer go for it the choice is yours there are better options if you're willing to pay more and we'll cover that in that future video but the quality is not super stellar and that's what makes me think that this was not built for gaming originally, despite all the current like boxes marketing and everything, which also it says pay minimum, enjoy maximum because this kind of, you know, input only record to micro SD card kind of thing is kind of more suited as like a TV capture thing where you plug it up to your DVR or to uh, the split off of an AV receiver or whatever. And you're capturing TV shows or home movies from a DVD upscaler or VHS upscaler or whatever to capture your home movies, not necessarily gameplay. I see a lot of these that that's what they were originally targeted for. And they're like, we can reach gamers now, fellow gamers. And I don't know that this was really built with gaming in mind. Speaking of gaming, testing oddball formats and retro testing like I do in every video, 1080i works, seems to be de-interlaced before it reaches the computer. Pretty cool. 480i works, seems to be de-interlaced. The OSSC works in all 2x through 5x modes. So while the quality will already be pre-compressed if you're wanting to use the open source scan converter and just easily capture even to micro SD card or to your computer and stream and you're not worried about the best quality as long as it's already in 1080p and you're playing in 1080p on your computer. This will work with the open source scan converter for 2x through 5x to play your games and capture them. So pretty cool. Same thing with the RetroTink 2x at 480p works fine. It does not support any 240p input, however. I wanted to briefly touch on as well, you will see on the, the sticker, actually this isn't even a sticker, the label on the box, it includes licenses for Cyberlink Power Director and Screen Recorder 4. So I wanted to check this out. I've used Cyberlink Power Director before. It's a video editor. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's a thing. 
Um, but I've never tested their screen capture program. I never even knew that they, it existed. Cyberlink's website is very difficult to navigate and it took a little, I, I actually, <laughs> at the time of recording, I never even found a way to actually activate the key for this software because it only wants me to buy it. It's not, there's no redeem section for this kind of key. There doesn't seem to be an input your license key field. It just wants you to log in and then buy it. So I just went with the trial, which has no watermark or anything. And in 30 days, it'll expire. And then maybe it'll ask me for my key. But I never really found a way to redeem the key here. But I wanted to test it out regardless because it seemed pretty cool. And it kind of resembles Camtasia's screen recorder in that it puts a little border over your, your screen. You can determine which region of the screen you're recording, whether or not you're recording a webcam or whatever. Or you can put it into device mode to capture the capture card, which is what I'm testing here. I can do a full video on the screen recorder software in the future. If you would like, let me know in the comments below. Um, so essentially, theoretically, you're getting a $35 value based on the price on the website for that software, which whatever, not necessarily. Um, it's kind of cool. Like I said, it's got some cool features. You can even set up overlays and things like that for streaming, uh, but you have no control that I can find. Maybe that's a trial limitation. You have no control over the recording quality. So it records to 13 to 14 megabits per second, H.264, which is about the same quality as the micro SD card. But you don't get any control to actually change it or make a better quality or whatever. So that was kind of disappointing. But if, if OBS is too intimidating for you and you don't want to watch my countless tutorials on the software and you're looking for an easy solution to just kind of plug it in and record it, the included Cyberlink screen recorder may be the option for you. Conclusion time. This capture card is $120, which kind of goes against their whole pay minimum, enjoy maximum thing, because that's definitely not the minimum. If you're looking for just a plug and play solution and quality wise, you're not looking for anything amazing. Since this doesn't even have pass through, if you don't need the micro SD recording, buy the $15 or $3 on AliExpress can't link that I've been recording or reviewing recently, or even the $80 Atomos is cheaper than this. And you're getting the exact same effective product to you. So, in the world where these little can't links don't exist in the $50 black capture card I reviewed, all of those are a better value than this. However, if you're looking for something that lets you record without a computer, this could be an option you consider. Like I said, I would kind of hold off for my video on capture cards without a PC because I think there are potentially some better solutions you can consider. But overall, yeah, that's my thoughts. It's, it's very flexible. The fact that it works in different operating systems, that it works with Skype, Zoom, Discord, the latency isn't horrendous, it's not great. It gives you that flexibility of recording without a computer. You just still need an HDMI splitter for that, especially since there's no screen on here. You can't see what you're recording, uh, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I just don't know that I would recommend it for $120. I would recommend it for $50 or $65 maybe, but $120 is way too steep for it, IMO. If you're interested in picking this up for yourself, affiliate product links will be in the description below. As always, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm Evo Vox, your stream professor. And check out my playlist link in the video description for other capture card reviews if you want to see all the other ones I've reviewed or anything I'm talking about in this video. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.